Let's take a look at how to make this heads up display UI element in After Effects with absolutely no plugins. Let's get right to it. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Welcome back to another After Effects motion graphics tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at this HUD element. It's all basic stuff. There's shape layers going on. There's a little bit of 3D camera movement using a neat trick with null objects to make it a lot easier. Um, and some basic 3D depth space sort of stuff. So let's jump right in. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects. Let's create a new composition. I'm going to do this at 2560 by 1440 because that's the size that I want my video to be at. We'll call it main and 30 frames per second is probably fine. 20 second duration also totally fine as well. First thing we're going to need to do here is just drop ourselves a little background in. So I'll just call this BG. Control Y will make you a new solid and it should be already at the size of your composition. That's totally fine. I'm going to go up to my effects and presets window and I'm going to type in four color gradient. That's four hyphen C should bring it up and just drag and drop that onto my um, background here. And let's just make all these colors uh, a variation of black with a touch of blue. So we're just going to drag up something like that here. OK, let's eye drop all of these other ones. So we've got four of the exact same color. And then from the top to the bottom, we'll just start making them slightly darker and slightly less blue with each one until we get down to pretty much black. And then we have a nice um, soft gradient background. Let's uh, increase the jitter there to about 30%. And that will just make it a little bit smoother. And you won't get any banding effects on your gradient background. So with the gradient background done, let's start making our HUD elements. Now the HUD is going to be very simple. It's largely just going to be shape and text layers. So I'm going to long press on my rectangle tool up here until I get the ellipse tool. And I'm going to alt click on my fill until I get the box with the red line through it. That means no fill. And then we're going to go to stroke. About 10 pixels will be fine. And let's make it a, a bright red like so. And holding shift, I'm just going to draw myself a circle roughly that size. Let's press control, alt and home to center that anchor point on the shape and position that roughly where we'd like it on our stage. This is going to be our outer ring. Let's twirl down our contents and ellipse here until we get to ellipse path. And let's round this out just so it's easy. A nice even 600 by 600. Let's then twirl down our stroke and click the uh, plus icon next to dashes and that will make this a dashed stroke. Now let's rename this outer. Let's press U to collapse everything down and duplicate that layer and we'll call this inner. Now this one we want to be slightly smaller so we'll expand again, ellipse path and we'll make this one, we'll just drag it down until it's a bit smaller. Let's leave this at 10 pixels but let's remove the dashed lines from it by just clicking this minus icon here. And actually thinking about it on the outer ring, we don't want that to be a 10 pixel. So let's do five so that it's slightly thinner like so. OK, let's round this one up again to say 540. So it's a little bit bigger. Actually, let's do a nice even 550. Fantastic. Let's collapse that again, duplicate that layer again, and we'll call this one mask. This is going to be the mask for our um, profile picture image. So we'll do that. Let's bring up those contents ellipse path tools again, and we're not doing the size via scale. We're doing the size via the actual size of the ring here because it makes our life a little bit easier when we come to um, scale everything a bit later on. So with that, we do not want to fill. We want a stroke for, uh, sorry, we want a fill, not a stroke for this one. Uh, if you want to, you can eyedrop of the red though, so it's the same color. Okay, looking good, but that's a bit too much red at the moment. So let's take our inner layer here and make that white. Boom, looking a little bit nicer. Now let's add a couple of lines along the bottom so that we can start dancing those about. Let's remove our fill. Um, a stroke width of 10 will work nicely. And let's just hover over the edge of our shape here with no layer selected. Click and then hold shift and click the other side of the shape. Now go to your move tool so that you can move the whole layer. Again, if you'd like to, you can press control, alt and home to center that anchor point. And let's move it down to the bottom of our shape here. We'll just call this line and we'll duplicate that. Let's move that line a little bit further down, make the stroke width a five. And let's make this top line here the same red as all the others. Looking pretty nice. So line one and line two. Perfect. OK, uh, a few more things then that we're going to need uh, on our shape layer. 
let's add a teeny tiny little circle up here in the top right so that we can have a little pulsing a rotating circle once again we can select that layer control alt and home and we'll make this one the nice chunky 10 pixels like so and we'll just position it so that it looks like it's roughly at the top of our ring of shapes here okay let's shift all those up just a little bit that's pretty much where i want that to be um, but let's add some new shapes on here as well new rectangle on top we need a stroke width of 10 once again and let's do a rectangle that's slightly longer than our shape like that looks pretty good to me control alt and home we'll center that up and then with this layer selected let's just rename this first one small circle let's rename this one accessing box my keyboard is ghosting because it's got low battery so ignore any typos that you see i'm very sorry about those uh, let's lock off our background layer we can select all these layers apart from this circle here and just go to align center and that will just center up all of those shapes so that we know they're all perfectly central let's duplicate accessing box once more let's pop it below the other layer and let's give it a fill of the same color but remove the stroke by alt clicking up the top perfect now let's grab a text layer here and just type in the word accessing now you can use obviously whatever font that you would like for this one. Um, I have found a font that I like. It is not Okra Mamki. Uh, it is a font called uh, Bank Gothic. So that's what I'm going to pop in here. Bank Gothic looks quite nice. Uh, we're going to have to recenter that. Control lot home. Scale him down and just pop him in the middle. Just there. That looks very nice. Great. I'm going to take my accessing box here, the one with the fill, and we're just going to reduce that opacity down to, say, 80% so that we know we can see through it a little bit easier. Now, that's all of our setup done here, apart from adding the image. So let's do that. OK, so here I have this image from the uh, tipped up uh, title sequence, intro sequence. So I'm just going to drag that into my project window here and I'll just pop it on top of our mask layer like so. Let's scale everything down and pop him into place and let's have him peek out the top of the circle but make sure that he feels the bottom of the circle you saying he like it's not me <laughs> uh, let's take our mask layer as well then and we'll pop the image below that and we will do an alpha mat on that mask and that's going to mean that my face only appears on the same layer where this mask layer has content then we're going to duplicate um, just my um, image layer and remove the track map and then we'll just draw a quick circle around my head or a quick square around my head doesn't matter just any piece of content that would have exceeded beyond that circle and now we've got a perfectly circular if we remove these layers here you'll be able to see we've got a perfectly circular edge um, to our bottom but we pop out the top let's just take all of those three layers to make life simple for ourselves and press Control alt and home and we'll right click and pre-compose them and we'll just call this person now we have a composition with all those three layers inside it if you want to you can move the pan behind tool to the center of my neck as well like that just so it's a little bit easier to manage and again if you want to have borders that are roughly the right shape then you can just draw a quick mask over that composition and then whenever you select the composition in the window you'll get transform controls at the edge of that mask which is quite useful in some scenarios great let's finish uh, off our preparation work then let's collapse all of this down like so and bring back up our accessing box and other shapes and let's draw ourselves with no layer selected a line that is 10 pixels thick and white and we're going to draw that coming off of the edge of our ring here just until we're about the same height as the top of the head like that and then we'll come out as far as we need to to make it look like it's an, an evenish shape and that now gives us the ability to actually fully center up within our composition our hud element so we'll just do that beautiful okay great uh, i'm actually going to duplicate these two lines Control d just to duplicate and let's push them all the way up to the top and we'll call this first one line top and we'll call these other ones a variation on line bot like so, take both those lines, 
bring them all the way over to the right and up a bit. Let's maybe have them in line with the accessing text here, like so. Perfect. Going to the pen tool and selecting one of them will allow you to pick one end of your line and shift that all the way along just until it's roughly aligned with the top of the UI element. And we'll do the same thing for the red line here. Perfect, looking pretty good. Okay, that's great. Uh, now we just need to add some information onto this and we'll be all done. So let's grab a new text layer and we'll just type in name, Matt Fryer. Let's select this text, scale it down and we'll use this to position the rest of the text as well. So scale that into position. Now, don't worry if your preview um, gets disabled. That is just because you have a caps lock enabled. So you need to turn caps lock off like that. So let's make the name text red and have the rest of the text be white. Let's um, align the anchor point to the center of the shape, control out home. But also, more importantly, let's go to paragraph and align the text to be the left. Well, that does then actually gives us a left aligned tank anchor point like so. And what it also means when we start to duplicate this text in a moment with control D, we can start moving things down knowing that they are all aligned. So name, Matt Fryer, let's give me uh, a role, I guess. And my role would be designer. Uh, as well as a role, I'm also going to need some skills, you know, some skill sets. So let's remove this first piece of text here. And let's say what's one skill set could be animation. Definitely not typing and definitely not on this keyboard. <laughs> let's scale him down like that. Disable caps lock again, obviously. And let's start spreading these out. Let's give me, let's give me four skills. I'm pretty sure I'm good at four things. Duplicate him just once. Now let's select all four of these layers, go to align and distribute horizontally just to spread them out evenly. So let's have animation. Let's have design. Let's have editing. And let's have uh, anxiety. <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, they're all set up. Now, what, what, what are we measuring here? Like my skill level in each of these. So let's draw ourselves a nice thin rectangle with no um, stroke, but with a white fill. Let's zoom in a bit and let's draw ourselves a rectangle. Slightly shorter than the full thing. That looks pretty good to me. Let's select that layer, Control, Alt and Home. Let's align it up like that. Looks pretty good. Um, yeah, that's nice. Let's just attach that to the um, the uh, animation layer here. And let's just make both of them the same color. So at a glance, we can see, you know, what's correct. And let's just continue onwards downwards. So we'll need shape layer two. That can be for design. Shape layer three. That can be for editing. And shape layer four can be for anxiety. Okay. So no need to align all four of them perfectly. You can just align the top and bottom ones, select them all and just go back down to here to distribute them. That looks great. Now let's do a new layer on top of that. Okay, um, so we'll take all these other layers here. Shape layer two will be attached to design. Shape layer three is attached to editing. And shape layer four is attached to anxiety. <laughs> um, so let's pop them above each other like that. Yeah. So design and shape layer two, let's give a different color. Editing and shape layer three, let's give a different color. And anxiety and shape layer four, let's give a different color. That's pretty good. Let's make all these other colors over here. I don't know, something different like green for now as well, just so we can see at a glance what we're working with. Final thing to do then is to just give ourselves another layer on top of each of these. So let's control D, um, our animation shape layer here. Let's make it red. And we want to see how much anxiety I do have or animation skill I do have. So let's select our rectangle tool, make sure we're on a mask and let's draw ourselves a mask over animation. That's like, I'm pretty good animation. Let's put it around there. Okay. Now let's do the same thing with all the others. Let's duplicate shape layer two here. Let's make it red. 
Let's make sure I'm on shape layer selected with mask selected. Design, uh, I'm not quite as good a designer as I am an animator. Or maybe I'm a little bit better. I don't know, somewhere around there. Um, editing, let's do the same thing again. Duplicate that with Control D, just the once. Go up to your shape layer, make sure it is red. And adjust the mask. Uh, I'm quite a good editor. Let's pop that like here. And anxiety, <laughs> uh, that's through the roof. So that one I hesitate to even add a mask, but we'll make it like, I don't know, like a solid 98%. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, great. So here you can see we have our full AI pretty much ready to go. Last thing, maybe you might want to like tweak a few of these bits, you know, bring these guys down a bit. Gives you these a bit more room to breathe like that. We don't want to move that top one. That was wrong, you know. Just something to spread out ever so slightly there. And once you're happy with that, then you can get ready to animate. I think that I'm happy with that red line in alignment there. Perfect. So let's start animating this. So let's collapse everything that we're working on here. OK, so for the base layer then of the UI, I think I want probably these two inner and outer circles. That's going to be pretty good. Um, I'd want these three lines over here, so the, the, the top line and the two bottom lines like that. And I'd want them all to be on the same layer. So I'm going to grab all of those. I'm going to push them down with Control, uh, Open Square Bracket. So they're all on top of each other. Right click, Precompose. And we'll call this one like um, UI Base. We know that's the lowest part. It's the base of our user interface or, or heads up display. So that's on one layer. On like the layers that come a little bit further out, um, let's say we'd want the face of the person, this circle and the two lines. So we've got our two lines here in our small circle and we've got our person as well. So we can have that as a separate comp. We just need to remember that. So let's stick with the two lines in the small circle. Right click, pre-compose. We'll just call this UI mid. And if you wanted to as well, you could obviously just rename this one to UI mid person or something like that. Okay. Then you have your accessing box information. So we definitely want uh, the line and the stroke to be on the same level. I also think I probably want the text to be on the same depth level as well. So we'll take all of those, right click, pre-compose them and just call this uh, UI accessing. Perfect. Now I want all of this text information here to sit out further from the rest of the information. So let's grab all of that, all the names, all the shape layers, everything else, and just pre-compose them. Bam, and we'll call this UI info, okay? So now everything we need is wrapped up in its own composition, okay? So let's go inside each composition and start animating them. Inside UI base, first of all, let's go to the start of our animation. I'm gonna click this little button down here to make the background black, so it's a bit easier to see what we're working with. So let's start with these two rings then. Let's go to the outer ring and click add trim path like so. And that what that allows us to do is just trim the edges of our path down. Let's turn off adaptive resolution so you can see a bit easier. So you can see here I can grab or increase or decrease my end state like so. So let's start at zero. Let's keyframe that. Move over one second and go all the way up to 100. Let's press F9 on both of those for a bit of an easy ease. Boom. There we go. Looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that. But it's a bit boring at the moment, so let's just go down to this offset. Let's alt click the offset keyframe and just type in a short expression called time and then times, let's say 10 and then close that off with a semicolon. And the times is the asterisk key. What that does is just over time animates it a certain amount. And obviously the higher the number, the more it animates that offset and that just leaves it to spin quite nicely. Awesome. Let's do the same thing to the inner ring. We don't need the spin, but we do need the trim path. So let's trim that path down. But what I want is for this one to start at this certain point here. So we will rotate this offset until it lines up with that line. And then we will close everything down like that. Let's take end, move over 30 frames. That's control shift right to move over 10 frames at a time. Crank that all the way up to 100. Let's hit F9 on those keyframes as well. Now, once we go into our graph editor, you can click on speed graph like so, and we can just make that go from fast to slow. So let's drag these handles in so it starts slowly, speeds up in the middle. There you go, that looks quite nice. And what we can do is as soon as that shape is finished animating here, 
we will have our line at the top trim path as well. So at this point, twirl it down, add trim paths. And this one's exactly the same. Crank that end all the way down to zero, keyframe it, move over a second, crank it all the way up to the top, hit F9. And what we're doing here, if you if you zoom in until you get like three blocks between your two shapes, is you're just taking these handles and dragging them each to that line. Like so. So you've got three equal segments, and that just makes it speed up and slow down quite nicely in a very smooth manner. These two exactly the same thing. On the other two lines on the UI midsection, we'll make them like shoot back across the screen. But these ones we want to come in because they frame that um, text content that we had on the other layer. So let's do trim paths on these as well. Twirl that down, go from zero to 100. If you wanted to, actually, you could probably make the start start at 100 and then keyframe it down to zero. And then on the other bottom line, you could add a trim path and start the end at zero and keyframe it up to 100 so that they come in from different directions. Something like that. Keyframe it up to 100, F9. Go to your graph editor, do the same thing. Drag these handles to the inner lines, like so. And as you can see, those come in from different directions. Just adds a little another level to it. Yeah. So let's look at our UI base. Very nice. That looks pretty good. Happy with that. Um, so let's use that as a base for the rest of it. Once these shapes have finished animating in at one second, we probably want something to happen with our person and other layers. So let's go back up to main. One second in, let's go to UI mid person. So that's just going to be me here. Okay. This one, we're going to do this animation in the first level. So we'll double click it. So we've got everything that we're working with here again. What we'll also do is select all these layers and pre compose them again. And we'll just call this one person inner. Okay. And what that does is allows us to treat this as one layer. So we can take our pan behind tool once again and we can center that up if you want because we might be scaling this. What I want to do with this first one here is I'm going to add an effect called Venetian blinds, like so. And we're just going to drag that on top. Now we're going to set the direction of the Venetian blinds to be negative 45 and the transition completion to be 50. And all that does is it makes this kind of like hashed Venetian blind, like an actual, you know, blinds on a window um, kind of effect here. And we'll set that at 50% so it's halfway complete. Then we'll go back to our effects and presets, choose fill. If I can type even the word fill correctly on this dying keyboard, and that's going to fill it with a nice solid red for us um, to make sure that it's the exact same red. Let's go back up to our main composition and to bring up this flow chart here. I'm just pressing tab and then I can bring up like that. Let's go back here. Let's go inside any one of our other compositions and we'll just copy this fill color with control C. Let's go back up to main back inside UI mid person here. And we will just make that fill exactly the same there. Bam. So we know that's perfect now. That's exactly the same thing. Let's go back up to main because as you can see where we've changed the size of that composition, our mask is now a little bit broken. So let's just delete that mask and start that again. We'll move our anchor point of this main one over here. I don't know why I'm doing this because I'm probably not going to do any scaling on this guy, but just in case I do, we'll prepare it as if we're going to, and we you know you follow good practice. So we now have this guy here. Let's pop him back in the middle. OK, so now we're going to do something that's pretty clever. We're going to duplicate this UI mid person in our timeline window here, like so. Oops, just the once. So you've got two copies of it. And then we're going to take our person in a composition, which if you open up, should be exactly the same as our person composition, apart from um, it doesn't have the uh, hash line effect applied to it. And we're going to actually pop that by holding alt with this layer selected and it's selected in your project. Hold Alt and drag it over the top, and that's going to replace it with your real person. So now what we have is the real person on top of the um, Venetian blinds person. And when we come to add the 3D elements, that's going to look really nice. OK, so that's pretty cool. Um, we will animate these uh, in a really simple way just by having them shift up and uh, sort of blink in after time. So what we need to do for this one is the animation on our uppermost level here in this composition. So we're just going to press T bring up opacity on both of these. OK, just T once, not mask opacity, normal opacity. And we're just going to keyframe those. Give it one second. We're going to keyframe them again and then go back to the first one and change it down to zero like so. Let's just ease those out so it's a little bit smoother. Now these are going to fade in like that. Probably not at one second. We probably want this a little bit later, actually, maybe something like two seconds. So we'll hold Alt Shift and move those over by pressing right. Uh, we'll also offset this first one. 
maybe 15 frames so that the uh, red fades in and then this one fades in. And later when we come to do the 3D, we'll also make these pop out as well and scale up a little bit. So back up one second in, let's go to our UI mid elements here, which are just these three points, and we'll just start animating these. Let's do the circle first. This one's going to be quite simple. We're going to twirl down our ellipse like so. We're going to keyframe it size, move over one second, and then on that first keyframe, drop it down to zero. Let's hit F9 on those, go to our graph editor and do the usual amount of easing. Just a nice snappy motion that isn't too fast, too slow, too distracting, but isn't boring because it's very linear. So now that's going to scale up our circle from zero all the way up like this. So to start this circle looping, let's have a trim paths added onto there. And just bear with me with these keyframes because we're going to do a little bit of scripting added onto that. So just trust me that this works, okay? Let's drag um, our end frame all the way down to zero and we'll keyframe both of those, okay? Start and end. Let's move over one second and we want to move that end keyframe up to 100, okay? And this keyframe here, we're going to leave it zero and just keyframe that again. Let's move over another second. We'll leave this key end keyframe at 100, but we'll move the start keyframe up to 100. Then we'll move over another second like so. We'll leave the uh, start keyframe at 100 and the end keyframe at 100 as well. And what that does is it allows our circle to come in like this and do this complete loop and then hold for a second. So it comes in, does the complete loop and exits out again. Let's F9 all those keyframes and let's add some easing to them. So it looks a little bit nicer. Then we're going to apply a loop out expression to both of these. So we'll alt click both the start and the end and we'll replace this uh, piece of script here with a piece of script that says loop out. And you can just double click that and close it off with a semicolon. So you don't have to type out the whole thing. Boom. Now what that will do is take all those keyframes we just made and loop them continuously. So we get this nice um, looping and pausing thing here. If you wanted the gap between them to go shorter, you can decrease that last gap here and that will allow it to pulse a little bit faster, which I think I quite like. So let's do that. Let's also alt click offset and do time times 10. And what that will do is it will set the whole thing spinning forever and ever as well. So you can see that it's going to start and end in different positions. Let's actually make it 100. I knew I had a feeling it should be 100 and then it should actually spin quite quickly. Yeah, that looks a lot nicer. OK, that's great. Let's do these other lines then. Let's collapse down the small circles here. And for these lines, we're going to do something kind of similar. We're going to add a trim path. We're going to keyframe the start and the end, and we're going to take that end all the way down to zero. Move over one second, and we'll drag the start and the end up to 100. We'll hit F9 on both of those. Give them our regular amount of easing. Boom. And then we're going to offset the uh, start position by a few frames. So let's say five frames. Let's move those over like so. Now that's going to give us a little dashed line that darts from one end to the other, but disappears again. Uh, and you guessed it, we're going to alt click both of those. And we are just going to loop out. Now you may get a little bit of weirdness happening at the end, but we can fix that with keyframes. Don't worry, let's just check it. Yeah, you see this little section where it breaks here? That's why we added all these extra keyframes onto this portion, because it's actually looping these keyframes, but they're all offset. So what you need to do is just add another keyframe at either end so that the animation starts and ends at the same time and the same value. And what that does is it makes the loop a perfect loop, okay? Because it's then looping from two to from two seconds to you know three seconds and five frames over and over again whereas before it was looping but the offset was breaking the loop so that's why we add all these extra frames let's do the same thing to the other line but let's do it in reverse so let's add a trim path like so and this time we'll crank the end all the way up to 100 and let's make our background black so it's easy to see back at the two second mark we'll keyframe both of those move over one second keyframe them again and we'll bring the um start frame down to zero and the end frame down to zero. F9, do our easing, and do our offset. Let's offset the start five frames. Now, before we do the loop out, let's add those like st stabilization keyframes, I'd suppose you'd call them. So you've got that perfect um, loop time period. And let's then add in the loop out expression. And this time you'll see that it won't break. 
Both of these lines now will dart in opposite directions, but will do so perfectly. Okay, awesome. So that's the animation in this composition done. Let's go back to our main window and see what we've made so far. It's looking pretty good, huh? I quite like that. Um, it could do with a little bit of tightening up maybe, but we'll come back to that at the end. You can tweak however you like. Uh, let's do the UI accessing. So after our head pops up like so, we're going to want our um, accessing section to open up. So let's do that. Let's double click inside here. We have our accessing shapes. Let's grab both of these and twirl them down until we can see their contents. And let's keyframe the size of the path each time. And let's unlink those and change the width of both of them down to zero, like so. Okay. Now, both of these, it's important because of the stroke width here that we select both those layers and choose Alt, Open Square Bracket to cut them off where we want the animation to start. Move over one second. And go back up to, let's just make it an even 900. Oh, that's way too long. Let's make it an even 800. Let's see what that looks like back in our main composition, just to double check. A little bit too long, so let's try 850. I can't, uh, sorry, 750. I can't remember the number that it was on before. I should have checked. I think that'll be fine. Yeah, a touch too long. Let's do it at 720 and leave it at that. Again, should have checked that. My fault entirely. Let's keyframe those, F9. Let's give them the same amount of easing. So you can see here, it's a lot of the same techniques um, as before. Grab both of those, make sure you grab both of them and drag them in like this. This would be the Y value. So it's just if we ever change the Y value, we know it will change at the same speed because obviously at the moment we have not changed that Y value. But what we will do, of course, is take the box with the fill and offset that. Boom, boom. Very nice. Okay. Let's animate the text and we'll loop this text as well. Let's twirl this down and choose animate and let's animate opacity like so. Let's go to the range selector, which chooses the um, uh, parts of the word that this will affect. And let's, we want it to kind of come from the middle. So let's do 50% on both of those. Let's keyframe them and we'll drag the opacity down to zero. So you can see here it's affecting none of it. So if we have it, say going from zero to 100, like so, move over one second and move it to 50 50, you'll see that you get your text kind of coming in from the outside in, which is perfect. Very nice. Let's just ease that just a little bit better. And that's way too slow. So let's just make it 10 frames. Perfect. And I want this to blink. So let's just loop both of those like we did before. Curl both of those down, loop out. No need for um, any extra safety keyframes on this one because there is no offsetting. They are at the same time. And we'll just get there a nice blinking motion. What we will do though is add another keyframe say five frames after and just copy and paste these and that'll just hold it for those five frames. Nice, let's do 10 frames. Much nicer. So now we have our accessing blinking animation. Bloom, 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 bloom. Awesome, at some point that will have to change to access granted, but for now we will have uh, animating the rest of our text. So just about when that finishes, so that's gonna be at say, two seconds, let's animate our info. Uh, we'll do the same thing here for these pieces of text as we did for the other one, but we will have that start um, with opacity and we won't do the range selector, it's just gonna do all of it. So we'll just go down to zero and then with the range selector, we'll just go from um, 100 to zero. So if we crank both of these up to 100 like so, you can see that you can um, animate from left to right just by doing a simple zero to 100. So let's do that. Let's crank those up and do F9 and we'll leave that without any easing because it looks like then it's being typed in a little bit. And feel free to play around with this. I'm just doing a very basic one, obviously. I'm actually just going to copy and paste this range selector onto our role designer one as well here. And let's see if that works. Animator one, range selector one. No, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, it's because, of course, we need to go down to animator and animate the opacity and drag that opacity to zero and there. So we copied what happened there is we copied the animator, but we didn't copy the property that we wanted it to animate. So let's do that. Let's do something different for these other pieces of text though. Um, I think that'll be a bit nicer. First of all, let's just offset these keyframes. So the role comes in slightly after and then we'll 
start animating the rest um, five frames after that. So let's make this background black. So it's a little bit easier to see. Let's do something different with these. Let's just have uh, like a rolling position and opacity keyframe. So P shift T on all of these layers will keyframe all of those. Move over three frames, keyframe them all again. Go back to the beginning, shift them down just a little bit, and then opacity zero. Let's grab all of those, hit F9, and these ones we will do the same easing that we have done before, like so. Boop. Nice. Looks pretty good, but obviously we're going to offset these, obviously. Um, so let's go make sure we've got animation is number one, design, then editing. Yep, so they're all in order. Let's just offset them five frames each. So this then will obviously be offset 10 frames. And this will be offset 15 frames. So now we have all these elements coming in in order. Nice. And once those are finished animating here, we'll just have all of these text lines come in at once. So this should be pretty simple to do. OK, let's grab all of our actual shapes, the white shapes first. And what we're going to do is move their anchor points over to the left. You can do this with a pan behind tool just by clicking and dragging them like this. OK, and moving them into position. But I actually have a plugin called Motion V2 that allows me to do this stuff very simply. So I'll just do that quick for the point of a tutorial. I can just with one button just align them all over to the left. Very cool, um, simple trick. Let's scale these then. Let's click scale on all of these and unlock all of their properties. So we are only scaling the width. Something missed clicked there. Let me grab all those again. And we'll scale these down to zero. OK, move over one second, scale them back up to 100. Easy peasy. Let's grab all these frames and just hit F9 and do our usual easing. Again, we'll, we'll adjust the Y ones as well, even though we haven't animated them yet, just in case we choose to come back later and animate those. So we now have these frames here sliding up. Obviously, we can't see them because of the red, but that's OK. We'll fix those in a minute. So as those start to slide about halfway through, we will then grab our mask layers and we're going to twirl down the masks until we can click mask path and keyframe that. And we'll do the same for all the others as well. If you press U, twice that will open up everything and you should then be able to see mask path on each of your other layers so you don't have to twirl them down individually just a little bit quicker should have named these layers as well that was very lazy of me very lazy indeed ben marriott would be upset with us let's press u um, to bring up all of those layers but collapsed so you can see them a bit easier let's grab all these keyframes here make sure we've got them all selected move over one second Keyframe them again. Awesome. Let's go back to our first one here. And all we need to do now is just shift these masks over to the left until they're just out of the rectangle that they are masking. Like that. They should all end up in a fairly similar place. Awesome. Let's grab all of these frames and then ease them. F9 and our usual amount of easing. Boom. Now, obviously, at the moment, these all come out at the same pace. I'm not sure if that's an issue or not. I think that looks quite nice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You could offset them if you want to. I'm going to choose not to for this one. Let's go back up to our main window and look at the whole animation. OK, that's looking pretty good. Uh, I probably would tighten it up if I was looking at this um, properly, but that's good enough for now. Uh, it's slow so you can see everything happening, but in real life, I'd probably tighten that up so it takes a bit less time to do everything. Uh, let's say after a couple of seconds of accessing, it's going to then make everything green. So for access granted, very simple. We just need to go in and change some colors. The most complicated bit is probably going to be this accessing part here. So we're actually going to duplicate that composition so that we have UI accessing to going to go inside there and then we're going to select our shapes and change the colors of them. OK, what we can do then is just go and like remove the other one and bring the new one in this new access granted one in. OK, 
So we're actually going to trim off the composition by pressing B at the start of our animation so that we know that when we do bring this in, it will start at the right time. When it opens up, really easy. Let's just change this red to green. Uh, let's not do a green. Let's do like a nice um, kind of like turquoisey accepted blue, something like that. This time I'm going to copy this hex code, control C, and you can paste that, control V. Okay, the text will still be white, but this time it won't say accessing, it will say access granted, and it won't loop. So we'll just alt click these two things here so they don't loop. We'll select the text, access granted. Okay. Oops, this keyboard. Um, access granted. Awesome. So now we have this. Great. Good for us. Not using the document yet. That's fine. Let's go back to main. Um, so what we want at seven seconds in essentially is for UI accessing to animate out and UI accessing to, to animate in. Like this. We'll take care of the animating out afterwards, um, the scale wise. But for now, so that we know it's animating out correctly, we will just reduce this opacity. Like so. So now that animates out and fades out. Let's turn off adaptive final quality. Like so. And we have access granted. We'll make that look nicer when we come to the 3D section. Do not worry. Okay. In fact, if you wanted it to, you could fade it out like so. And then the new one comes in to say access granted here. Now at this point, the rest is just a case of changing colors. So at seven seconds in, we'll go into UI base like so. And all the reds just need to become green. It's as simple as that. So let's grab all these layers, press U, and we will take our stroke color here from red. One second over, green. Yeah, <laughs> really simple. Nothing special to this. So now we have changing from red to green. And you do that for any shape that is red. So this line here as well, press U twice, keyframe the color, move over a second, paste it, green. Okay, really simple. Just gonna go through and do the rest of those. You do not need to see me do that. Okay, so unfortunately in the only instance where this won't work is for the colors on name and role, and that's because they are part of the same text layer. So to rectify this, it's really quite simple. You can just take a sort of colored fill block like this and drag it over that name or role section. Um, we'll pop it just on top of the text by just dragging it down like so. Okay, and let's say this is for the, the name bit. We will duplicate the name layer, pop it above that uh, shape layer and then give it an alpha mat like so. And that means that this shape will only appear where there is a name layer above it. Uh, then we can just keyframe the opacity of that shape layer from zero up to 100. Now, obviously, the best way to do this is in the start is to just um, give the name and the Matt Fryer at separate text blocks. But I didn't think of that when I started. Um, so this is just an easy way to fix what we have now. Apart from that, though, everything else is the same. OK, so there you have it. I took this as an opportunity to tighten up the timings a little bit as well. So now everything comes in a bit nicer and then access is granted to Matt Fryer role designer, which is fantastic. So all of our animation is done. We now need to just pop that into 3D space. So anybody that's worked with 3D camera work in Adobe After Effects before knows that it's a little bit of a nightmare. Um, so we're actually going to tie our camera movement to a null object for this simple camera movement section. Um, before we do that, I've forgotten one background element. I'm just going to press Control Y and we're going to call this Venetian. And we're going to make a solid that is two times larger than our canvas. So we're just going to take our canvas settings and type in times two. And that's going to make it really big for us, like so. That's going to give us a white canvas I can put above the background. And we're just going to add a bit of texture to our background here by going to Effects and Presets and bring out that Venetian blinds effect from before. Uh, and this one we're going to set once again to negative 45 and we're going to set the transition completion to say like 75%, which gives us a bunch of these thin lines here like so. Let's change that to a soft light as well and drop the opacity down to like 20%. And that's just going to give us a nice little um, sort of striped texture in the background here. So with that done, it's time to do the background, uh, the camera ever so finely. So let's do layer, new, and camera. And that's gonna give us a new camera. Now, all these settings we're gonna leave as fine. Uh, two node cameras, fine, whatever, don't care. But we do want to enable depth of field, okay? That's the most important setting here. Let's just click okay. 
doesn't affect 2D layers, not a problem. We're going to turn all our layers to 3D. So make sure that you have this um, menu appearing here. If you don't, you just need to click toggle switches and modes. And we're going to turn on all layers for backgrounds apart from our locked background solid layer. All our layers now are 3D. Let's press before we do anything else, Control, Shift, Alt, and Y. And that's going to create us a new null object in the middle of the screen. Then we're going to make that null object 3D. Then we're going to tie our camera with the pit grip to the null object. And what this allows us to do, if we press up R, for example, to rotate the null object, it will rotate any 3D element on our stage. Additionally, however, it allows us to control all of those 3D elements independently. And controlling the camera is a pain in the butt because of things like points of interest and all of that nonsense. So for something simple like this, much better to do it with a null object. Okay. Let's go back to say like one or two seconds in so we can start to see some of our content. And I'm going to give this uh, X rotation, say like 30% to roll it back a bit. Y rotation will do 30% to go to the side a bit. And Z rotation will do like 15% and that'll just flatten it out. That's a bit much, maybe like, maybe like a 10%. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So you can see we scaled up this solid to make it um, big enough, but even then it's still not bigger. So if you want to, you can just scale that up a bit more so that it remains in screen with all of our background there, like so. Great, let's keyframe this starting point for the camera. So let's go to say about 10 seconds in and we're going to move our camera here now. So we're going to leave X rotation on 30, but we'll change Y to negative 30. And that will just give us something that rolls around our camera like this. OK, um, but we want to change that Z value as well. So let's see what negative 10 looks like. It makes you look like you're, you're rolling smoothly around your text here. Pretty cool. But let's do a little bit better. Let's scale this up a bit as well. So let's press a scale on there. Um, go over to 10 seconds and let's just bring our guy in a little bit like this. Now scale will work differently. So scaling it down will actually move you in. Don't ask me why. Probably something to do with like the negative values attached to uh, the null object and tied to the camera and things like that. So that's looking pretty good. So we're now slowly zooming in. Let's drop to like a third view. So we're now slowly zooming in as we rotate around. But you can see we kind of need to adjust the position of this as well. And this is why the null object is so great. You can just adjust the position like this. And bring it back in or out of position, however you like. OK. So here we'd want it to move over just a little bit. And even here before it starts. We would probably want to actually bring it that way a little bit too. Okay, so just tweak those camera settings until you get something you're happy with. I quite like this side on view that rotates and resolves to become a straight on view. And now we get to do the fun bit. Okay, so here is where we start to move things in Z space. So we know we wanted our base element here to be on its own sort of plane, but we wanted the mid elements, especially like the people to kind of like burst out of our shape here. So let's go to the point where these shapes start to animate, which is one second in. OK, and we'll have them start flat. We'll bring up position on both of those. And then after one second, i.e. when they've fully animated in or when some of them are fully animated in at least, we can drag these in Z space until they're a bit further up. So let's do something like negative 100 for our guy on the top here. And let's do something like negative 50 for our red shape. OK. Let's also increase the scale of this red shape a little bit by doing the same thing. But this time, obviously, you just scale it up to say, like, I don't know, 110 percent just to make him a little bit bigger. And let's then F9 those keyframes. Zoom in until we get our thirds preview. And tweak them a bit. So now as they fade in, they also separate from our animation here. Perfect. Now, let's do the same thing with accessing because we obviously want accessing to be on top. So let's grab this guy here, UI accessing. UI mid, I think I always want to be just say like negative 100. As soon as it comes in, we want the UI mid to be doo -doo -doo, just a little bit higher than the rest. We want UI accessing to be even higher than that. So position zero comes out all the way to position, let's say negative 200. See what that looks like. Well, that's a bit crazy. Let's do negative 150. Awesome. Let's keyframe those and easy ease them. 
And we might offset this one just a little bit, but let's see how it actually looks. Because remember, this one also scales up as well. So it kind of like pops out like that. Very nice. You can see that as you get, it overlaps that text over here and stuff like that. Very nice. And um, for this one as well, we also want it to disappear again. Okay. So as it starts to fade out here, I don't want it to just fade out because that's boring. Let's also have it go back down in position to zero. F9 those. Easy ease them. And boom, we now have it as it fades out. It also doom, sinks back down in the user interface, which is pretty good. And as the access gets granted, let's have this flatten back out too. So we'll take UI person and UI mid person, and we'll just take both of those position keyframes and we'll flatten those back down to zero on both of them. We'll like to be quite snappy. So again, we'll add in our nice bit of easing here. That looks pretty good. Now, as access gets granted, it flattens and the access granted box comes up. The access granted box, we don't even need to animate it coming out. If you didn't want to, you could just have it start further out. But let's see what it looks like if we do do a negative 100 like that. It's not going to overlap at this point because it's rotated the, the correct amount around. So that's great for us. Let's ease those. Excuse me. There we go. Awesome. Boop, boop, boop. Very nice. Access is granted. Um, the last thing we need to actually scale back down on this layer here. Um, so we've got it scaled up to 110%. As it goes back down, it's kind of goofy being <laughs> too big there. So we'll just scale it back down to 100. And actually, let's see what it looks like if we push it behind. Let's push it behind to say like 100 in the background. Let's leave it at 110, so it's below everything else. And let's drop the opacity down instead. So as you can see, you can play around with this stuff until you get something you're happy with. Because I quite like the idea of it being like a glow almost. So what we'll also do is we'll position it upwards a bit. Now, if we do it on just the Y axis, like so, that can actually look quite nice. Let's do something like that. Let's take a look at those, F9. Ease them out a bit. Boom, and now that's been pushed behind everything else in Z space. Boom. That looks pretty good. Um, let's push it even further back in Z space though. Yeah, let's do it until it goes all the way back like that. Like it's sunk into the user interface. Very nice. Now, obviously, access granted is at the top. The last thing then is we want the UI info, which is on its own layer. We obviously want that to pop out absolutely loads. So as soon as that comes in like this, we'll have that take longer. Let's say two seconds. And we'll have it come out to, say, negative 150 again, the same height as the rest of it, like so. And then as it rotates around, we can have it shift down if we need to, so it's not on top of that line as well. So let's do that with the position again, and we'll just keyframe him coming down just a little bit. As that rotates around to a more front view, it should look pretty nice there. Awesome, awesome. Now, let's F9 those and ease them out again. And if you ever decide that you want to change levels on an element that is already pre-composed, that's totally not a problem. Like this element here, for example, I actually Pretty sure I want to make the um, animation and design and editing bits pop out even more. So let's duplicate that with Control D. Okay. And uh, oh, actually, sorry, before we do that, let's grab this layer and mask out the section that we want to be further. And as you see, the mask will respect that 3D space. Then let's duplicate that layer, change the mask on the one on top to subtract. And that gives us your same layers back. Now you can choose a section that spins out even further. So this one might come out to negative 200, for example, like so. And now that's even further out than the rest of it. Awesome. Looking pretty good. The last thing to make this look even better, let's put it on full mode here, like so. And let's go to like an area where we can actually see some stuff going on. Let's collapse everything down. The last step is that depth of field that we were talking about. Let's go to the camera here, transform controls, sorry, camera options and you have your blur level. Let's turn that um, aperture all the way up to like 
2,500. That's going to give everything a super duper blur. Okay. Uh, now your um, focus distance here will control which part is in focus. So if I make that say 2,000, it will come closer to the camera. If I make it 3,000, it'll focus further away from the camera. Okay, so you just want to crank this up until we get the point um, in focus that you want. So not particularly perfect there. If you go to your two views mode, like so, and if you actually crank the focus distance, then you can see what things it's interacting with that it will actually be focusing with. Okay, so probably somewhere around there is quite good because then the text is in view. So let's make that a good even 2630. Okay, and that's going to be in line there. And then let's change the aperture down a little bit so that slightly more of everything is in focus. Let's do something like 1500 pixels. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go back to one view here. So you can see that like that blurs out these edges loads. And obviously at the start of your animation, when something is a, you know, shifting across the screen, here it's going to be in perfect focus. So let's wait for that to pre-render and we'll come back once it's rendered and we'll take a look at what we've made. Okay, and there you have it, our finished product. Um, of course, if you want to take this a little bit of a step further, uh, you could definitely add some glow and things like that to the UI elements um, just by using simple glow effects and things. But um, why don't you guys have a little play at this, see what you like, what you don't like about it. And if you do make anything cool, why not share it with me on social media uh, at Tip Tut Zone on all your regular, 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 your regular, regular social medias. It's been a very long day. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, I'll see you next time on Tip Top for another banger of an episode in motion graphics, probably. See you then. You guys are bloody lovely. All of my Level 2 members bring me such delight and joy. And if you'd like to become a Level 2 member for exclusive perks and benefits, click that join button below. Please. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.